Welcome everyone, this is Final Needles, and you're listening to Locho Players News, where we take a look at Lasers and Lotro and hear Locho Players. And this week I am joined by Krister, Yoo-hoo. Yoo-hoo. and Cinders. Hello. Hello. Whoa, whoa. I want to point something out. What? We, we just heard Cinders the first time. Oh, yes. I, okay. So I'm weird. I'm weirded out already. I think this is gonna be weird. <laughs> We're weirded loves out already. Me today. Okay, Discord loves me today. <laughs> okay. Then let's head to the news and lotro for the last week, where we have some release notes for update forty one dot three. Where the big news is that the Lexi of Morgoth is now available for pre purchase. Lexia Morgoth is the latest expansion for the Lord of the Rings Online. Venture into the untamed wilds of Nir Harad, where ancient secrets lurk beneath the sun-scorched sands and treacherous marshlands. Feel the thrill of discovery as you race against time, deciphering cryptic maps and forging unlikely alliances. In this land of hidden perils and breathtaking vistas, your choices will shape the fate of Middle Earth. With courage and your compass, pursue cunning traitors through scorching deserts, petrified forests, and wind carved canyons. Stand shoulder to shoulder with the fierce and enigmatic peoples of this land to prevent against a coming darkness more terrifying than ward or shadow. For the in these mysterious lands awaits something that few would have dreamt in their most terrible nightmares. The legacy of Morgoth. Dun, dun, dun. You had me at near Harad. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah, I had you at near Harad. You, you want to go to near Harad? Yeah, the moment I heard that, I just said, oh, yeah, just take, take my money. Take my money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'm very interested to see the vistas that they're talking about. Petrified forest sounds interesting. I, Canyon uh, sounds interesting. So I really hope that we get pyramids that we get to go through. I hope the legacy of Morgoth is that Sauron has like an older brother nobody knew about. You know, Phil, he's just been working at like the tire center for the entire time. And now he's learned that his brother's dead. So now he's coming back for vengeance. You mean the wheel? He's center. got he's the one ring. He's got the one uh what are, what were those the uh, one wrench. The one tire. <laughs> the one wrench. The one wrench to rule them all. <laughs> With this wrench, I can repair any way, ring, including the one ring. I just have to fish it out of that lava. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Minor little detail. <laughs> I mean, if the wrench can hold up to lava, it probably could fix it. <laughs> I have a feeling our, our idea would get shot down by the Tolkien family. I mean, I probably would get suspect so. He's got an older brother. Okay, the older brother's mad. He's got a wrench, a magical wrench. Uh, just get out of our office. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is noteworthy. First off, for the Veil of the Nine, the Nazgul marks now last up to one hour to create larger windows for special event formats. The mark will still be removed when a reward is acquired. And also, Nazgul are now immune to force taunt effects. Boo. <laughs> yeah, did it? Well, okay. I'm trying to think about why. Why would they be? Were, well, I wonder what was occur, what problem was manifesting for them being forced taunt. <laughs> that, that they decided to... I really don't know. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm just trying to understand that because maybe. I mean, was it? Did you ruin? Uh, did you ruin the the uh, encounter by doing that, or you know? So maybe I maybe they're just trying to tell us that Nazgul wouldn't really listen to any of us anyway, so you can't really force taunt him. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to guess that this is probably more of the latter. <laughs> For the Year of the Dragon, fix some issues with monster summons and stats in the solo and dual versions of this instance. Solo enemy morale has gone up by about 15%, but enemy defenses have been reduced slightly. 
I haven't had an opportunity to run this instance since then, so I really can't comment. Have either you two have a chance to run? No, I have not. Okay. The solo duo enemy enhancements buff is now visible to players. Avatars of War no longer summon group difficulty shades in solo duo. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> I never okay. noticed that they had done so. I guess I had assumed that they were regular shades when they did so. Is that or feel proud about yourself that you handled them so easily? Wait, is that or maybe I killed the avatar of war so fast that they never had a chance to summon the shades? That sounds like the ideal way to do it. <laughs> yeah. Frankly. And Rahul no longer summons group difficulty Grimms in solo duo. So that's another one who tended to die so fast that I don't think he had much chance to summon any Grimms. I guess maybe that's something that they discovered when, after they bumped up the morales a little bit, perhaps? Maybe. I, words, I were, could see that happening, yeah. Yeah, that, that now that they were no longer dying so fast that they decided, oh, maybe we better adjust this. They found some bugs in there that they noticed before because they didn't used to have the ability to uh, to be able to get it off because they were dead before than otherwise. I don't know. So let's go into the heart attack event. An issue that was causing the event to get out of sync has been addressed. Title descriptions have been adjusted to match the new number of completions needed to earn them in the heart attack event. We have also adjusted a typo. No details as to what that typo was. Oh. There should no longer be an errant broadcast occurring in the heart attack event space. Additionally, all event announcements should occur in the event space proper. And all crafted food should now correctly display the correct duration. Well, I guess that's good. <laughs> that is helpful. Helpful, yes. Also, for the birds. Birds collected while burning are not intended to be tradable. They should auto-consume and add to your collections panel. In the rare cases where these birds do appear in your inventory, they will now be bound to character and can simply be used from your inventory. I love the concept of that bird watching has turned into this horrible mass capture of birds that are being traded on this bird black market. <laughs> <laughs> the blackbird market. <laughs> yes. Bring all your crows, crabane, and any other dark species of bird. On Mordor and Agmar, the adventures of Bingo Boffin can now be completed through a change of name. Further quests will unlock once the level cap increases. Force taunts can once again overwrite one another without waiting for the active taunt to expire on your target. Fix the typo on the radar where players and monster players would be labeled as Warband instead of Glory Seekers. Okay. Yeah, I would. <laughs> the Runekeeper skill of Fulgurite or Runestone FX is now affected by the Enable Avatar Hit FX game option. Right? And the Monster Player Reward Track Season 1 will be temporarily re-enabled for final advancement and claims starting at 10 a.m. Eastern on October 3rd for 30 days. The end time countdown should now correctly display in the Reward Track as well. Oh, nice. so apparently there was some sort of trouble with the Season 1 Reward Track or something like that, which decided for them to on-court for a little while. And that's it for the release notes. Right. Now, I think that they also had the Harvest Mass Festival stuff in there because Cord was showing off some of the stuff on his account character during his show this week. Ooh. So we can probably... 
so that means that the Harvest Fest Festival, that's all in here. But of course, the Harvest Fest Festival, I think, starts next week. So that's something to keep in mind on that matter. And that's it for the update. So let's go into the big item that we just glossed over before. And that is pre-orders are now available for the expansion of the legacy of morgoth and the banner for this is showing azagat sea shadow and nakasi looking all nasty and whatever trouble they are going to be trying to cause because you you know that they're out wherever they are trying to cause trouble oh of course of course <laughs> And it was interesting because when I was playing with Sans today, we went through the initial meeting uh, with uh, Nakasi. Yep. Yeah, so, so she has certainly done a downward spiral, spiral since that point. Uh, yeah. So let's now go over the pre-purchase options that we have. And as usual, we have the Standard Edition, the Collector's Edition, and the Ultimate Fan Bundle. Yes. Okay. Now that one. Please have a writable bow rug. Please have a writable bow rug. No. Please have a writable bow rug. Oh. Oh, right. Fine. Go ahead and read it. All right. All right. Let's go. Okay. First off, in all three editions, we you will get the Legacy of Morgoth content because it will sort of defeat the entire per purpose of purchasing <laughs> it if it wasn't it, included. It would be hysterical if the fine print is that you did not actually purchase the expansion and must do so. <laughs> that would be <make laughs> so oh, ugly. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, the hate mail that would result from that. I mean, <laughs> they get enough hate mail from things as it is. You could just imagine. Oh, yeah. I think the internet <laughs> would just explode at that point. <laughs> yes. And, of course, it will include the instance cluster. And the current plan with the instance cluster is that the bulk of the instances will release with the expansion. And it's just a raid that will come later. Because last couple of expansions, the instance clusters came in after the initial release. But their plan right now is to release the instance cluster with the expansion and only the raid will be delayed because you need all that extra time in order to get a raid to work because raids are really complicated yes, i'm sure are. you i'm sure you know that christer since you've been in more of them yes they are and they can certainly test one's self-esteem self-worth confidence persistence and that's just the developers <laughs> <laughs> that's right <laughs> The, the actual gamers don't have a chance. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just, it's so funny to see well, and what I love about it is kind of the complexity of each one that you're confronting in the different raids. But it's so interesting to me that some raids seem very straightforward and doable. And some are just complete nightmares where you cannot predict anything. And I'll never forget the Mumex dealing with those Mumex uh, was a, uh, Oh, come on. I can't even believe it. it. Was it the Throne of Dread Terror, I think, was the instance? Or was the raid? Right. Yeah, and uh, those Mumax consumed us because uh, we definitely had... So So, anyways, yes, the I understand they're, they're, that I would expect that the raids would just take longer to put together uh, with the mechanics. So, looking forward to it, too, you know. What, what will our big enemy be this time? Maybe a writable Balrog? <laughs> Uh, we will see. Maybe that's the legacy of Morgoth is a Balrog. Uh, he had a segue. That's his legacy. He has a segue. <laughs> that's how we got around Middle Earth so fast. Uh, I didn't think segue wa segways were designed for high speed. I thought they were. That's the joke. Okay. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. Then. Now, the third item is something that has been added to the list since the initial posting of this. And that is the level 150 level up package. Because what happened is, 
Yeah, because the original thought process was that, oh, there's no level cap increase, so the players aren't going to be winning a, Wrong. a, a level 150 Valor to it. And the response from the public has been basically telling them that no you're wrong on this we've got these characters we want to experience the new content but we don't have a character that's 150 yet we but it's okay okay since this is all about buying the expansion and if you don't have any one level 150 characters then yeah it would be difficult for you to experience the expansion they said okay you got a point there so and i think it's not next week's update but the but the week after that, where when they do the update to the game for, for them, they will be adding the level 150 level up package and that anyone who's already bought it will have it delivered to the first character they log into that's A, completed novice level. In other words, not in one of the traditional starter areas. So if you're in pre-instance arch it for example you're not going to get it delivered to you because it's only someone who's reached novice level and who is on a non-legendary server since legendary servers can't use valors so they will not deliver it to a legendary server excellent i feel that gilligand will soon gain immense power <laughs> gilligandoff all right yeah but it'll just be on paper you know Krister earned. Krister earned 150. <laughs> okay. <laughs> None of my other characters really did. Yes. So 150 level up package then is is the next item, and then that will be at all three levels of there. Next is an extra character slot. I was oh. surprised that an extra character slot was added for this particular expansion. Because well, that I always wanted, because I, I believe in the Sans limit. So is it truly an extra character slot? If it is, then Sans would be able to add an extra character slot, right? Right. So can she with this? Well, well, I guess she should. Did she count the number of character slots she had after? I thought she was maxed. The expansion? Yeah, I thought she was completely maxed on characters and couldn't create any more of it. But then again, then again uh, I know a couple people yeah. like that, so... <laughs> yeah, but I was wondering if Cinder's knows. If I know what? If Sans, whether or not Sans ha actually did have a complete new extra character slot, even though she was maxed before. She did, and she rolled a Mariner. <laughs> right on. Okay, great. I'm she glad to hear she that, even so. used it. <laughs> this morning, yeah. That's perfect. I'm disappointed in her class right now. <laughs> no, but that's great. That's that's the main thing. Is if she can add the character slot, then that's excellent. That means it's yeah. that means it actually is a character slot, <laughs> right? And we have the a simple Ecorban portrait frame. And I'm looking at that portrait frame. They said that the portrait frames that were delivered with this need a little touch-up i guess it's probably the best thing to say on this i don't know what changes they're making on but i think it's either this coming week or maybe the week after that when they deliver the 150 level up package they are going to be updating the portrait frames that are being delivered with this update so so yes the simple corbin portrait frame is the one that we'll be getting that you get with the standard edition and you could just imagine the new names that they'll have for the others we'll get into them and then finally the defier of morgoth's legacy title so we are going to defy this uh this balrog or whatever it is that's and then we're going to defy it and we're going to defy it all right so that's within the standard edition and next we have the collector's edition and in the collector's edition you can of course get anything oh yeah i thought you were, I thought you were yeah 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 <laughs> yeah in the collector's edition they are they have everything that's in the standard edition, of course. But in addition to that, 
We also have the elaborate e c o r b o n portrait frame, in addition to the simple portrait frame that you got. And in addition to the Defier of Morgoth's legacy title, we have the Sandwalker title. So, because I guess we're going into some deserts in there. And you also get, of course, a cosmetic armor set, the Armor of the Sandstriker. And, of course, an accompanying steed to go with it, the Steed of the Sandstriker. With war steed equivalents. You know, it doesn't say it anything about War Seed Equivalent. War Seed Cosmetics. I checked. When I yeah. got my stuff, there were no War Seed Cosmetics. Yeah I, didn't, yeah, I didn't see any in there, right? And also a Cobra pet. And I believe this Cobra must be the Sand Striker in question because all these Sand Striker armor and the decorations on the Steed have this Cobra motif on them. The cobra's name is Mambo. And that's your cinders, and you rename it Jumbo. Yes. Because then, when you run around with Pie Leaf, you can have Mambo Jumbo. <laughs> yes. Thank you for laughing, Krister. Yep. Yes. <laughs> also, also, you will get the Journey Start Milestone Teleportation Style. Have you guys used that style? What is it? You, you you have... click, oh, let yeah. Me guess, let me guess. You click your heels together three times. <laughs> no, you pack a bag. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you, you pack all sorts of items in the bag. Yeah, and then you pick up the bag, and as you stand up from collecting all the stuff and putting it into the bag, that's when the teleportation happens. Okay, that so, sounds kind of cool. So. Yeah, I'm using that on a few of my characters already. I'm sticking with the whimsical one on M. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the the whimsical one is yeah, is is a is of course the other candidate. <laughs> I just really like that it looks like sparkly trees before you pour it out. <laughs> And some people say, "Oh, congratulations for leveling." <laughs> <laughs> At least it ain't a horse brats. And next item is is something that we're wondering exactly what this is about. That is the Scorpion Surprise Bobble. This is one of those things that's going to be delivered at the time of release. It's a bobble, so is it like a life scorpion you put in your pocket? <laughs> well, I'm not too sure exactly. Well, the bobbles, based on what Cordovan has been saying, are a new system in it. This is a new item in your collections panel. And that what they will do is that they will replace several of the items that are currently permanent clickables that are just for show. Things like fireworks, you know, those permanent fireworks that you get uh -huh. for the anniversaries. Yeah. Yes. So that's what the, the bobbles are things of that nature so that they will no longer take up take inventory, space. In inventory space. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry. So I'm those, sorry. I got a little misty. I'm crying right now. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. all those fireworks that you, all the non-consumable fireworks, since I think the consumable ones, I'm pretty sure, have to remain as inventory items. But all the non-consumable ones, like the ones you get in the anniversary boxes, those are, I think, will be turned into baubles and used in there. So what the Scorpion Surprise one is, I have a feeling that it's going to show you being. Really surprised by where a scorpion is going to pop up on your head. Yeah, I was wondering. Okay, you you check your shoe. You take off your shoe. You oh, that's even worse because if it's on your head and you say, "Hey, there's a scorpion," your your target is going to look down. They're going to be looking down for the scorpion. And the scorpion just jump right on the back of their neck. Boom. And then they Boom. Would done. Scream. Yeah. And then, of course, one of the rattlesnakes, one of the uh, desert strike snakes or whatever, which you have wrapped around your arm, you just fling that out to grab the scorpion and put it back on your head. Maybe I'm thinking too much about that. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I was just thinking, it. I could just imagine showing you trying to eat a pie. You open up the pie and then a scorpion jumps out of it. 
That wouldn't be my favorite pie. I it would not be your favorite. I, I prefer non-scorpion pies. <laughs> you expect hey, non-scorpion hey, hey, pies. But right. maybe it's a scorpion pepper inside the pie. Oh, instead of a live scorpion. Yeah. <laughs> Sam Burke, idea, scorpion hat. Because <laughs> people are going to mess with hat. you, though. If you have a big scorpion hat on, people are going to cross the street. They don't want to be... <laughs> I don't want to be around you. <laughs> All your friends no longer want to have anything to do with you. What's the problem? Ever since you've been wearing that scorpion hat, you've changed. Oh, yeah. Apparently, Sam wants us to get G.I. Joe to help fight against the Cobras. <laughs> now, that would be a crossover. Lord of the Rings and G.I. Joe. <laughs> crazy crossover. Yes. Oh boy! I just, I just, I just supplied the content of my night terror for tonight. So that, I'll tell you guys how it turns out. And it also includes improved expedition supplies and the expeditions and the expedition supplies that we have in there were the reputation acceleration tome times five. Virtue XP Accelerator, one of those. Five 100% XP Accelerators. And Rare Crafting Components times five. So those are what's going to be in the ex Expedition Supplies in there. And ooh, they've added the contents of the Level 150 Level Up Package that I had not noticed this before. It says, account bound delivered the first post novice non legendary world character on or after 1016. Okay, so they are planning to get those out to us by 1016. And here they have the level up to 150 item, including the Seeker of Deep Places, Riding Trait, War Steed, and Instant Discoveries and Skirmish Unlocks. Ooh. That's actually cool. So I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, a, that's a major frustration about Valore. It's like, uh, I don't really know anything. <laughs> right. I mean, some, you know, some people would really have to, okay, I don't have to go back to Rohan to learn how to ride a war steed. I don't have to worry about get unlocking legendary items. I don't have to worry about going about unlocking all those skirmishes. So, yes, plucking that on one of your low-level characters could save them a lot of time. Also, level 150 gear, such as rare armor, jewelry, and offhand weapons. And two basic legendary item boxes, select weapon or class item, assorted uncommon traceries, etc. They say uncommon... Okay, so that's, that's purple level. Right? Oh no, actually. Actually, uncommon. That's <laughs> you want to upgrade those quickly then. These aren't uh, uncommon, the yellows. Okay. Oh yeah. 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 So yes, you you will have you will probably have to upgrade those, but at least you've got traceries in there so that you can do something with them. All right, so that's what we get at level one, at, at that one level 50 box. So now I've gone through what's in the collector's edition and the standard's edition. So now let's hear what's in the ultimate fan bundle. In a, of course, we have all the stuff from the standard edition and all the stuff from the collector's edition. And then you also have an ultimate 150 level up package. This is in addition to the Regular 150. So actually, that's two Fowlers that are. I, there. you know what? I feel like they had to. They had to take those permanent cosmetic uh, effect things and make them bottles. Because every time you're saying this stuff, all I'm thinking about is I don't feel like I could ever make enough inventory space to actually open all of these boxes. <laughs> <laughs> so I realize the one carry all that we still need is a recipe carry-all to hold all of those single-use recipes that you get that you know you might need someday so you hang on to them. 
Do you know how much space I would have if I had even one of those bags? If I could put 50 of those out of my vault into one bag, I would have an almost completely empty bag. For the moment. Well, probably. That's the problem I had. It was all, anytime I got the miracle of clearing a bag, I usually filled it up about five minutes later. You're going, how did I do this? How is it filled, filled, up, filled up again? See, when you talk about emptying a bag, though, you're talking about one of the broken apart bags. I'm talking about, like, the whole thing. Oh, you've got the mega bag. I okay. have the mega bag. And I could have an empty mega bag, which would last me for a while. Until my mega bag right. is full of bags. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I need like a nostalgia carry carry all because I'm having the same problem that Sans has. I do have a set of equipment that takes some space that I can't use, is useless, has no, has no purpose, but it was either made by somebody or acquired in a very difficult situation. There's no way I'm going to just throw it away like it's nothing. You know? Right. A sentimental value. Exactly. A sentimental carry all. There we go. And I think that. So here, hear me out. If there was a way that we could take some of those other things that are currently in our vaults, though, then you'd have space in your vault for all your sentimental items where you could open your vault and you could look at them all, and then you would still have bag space. I, you know, now that you say that, I would love to see something cool, like... Because, you know, like I have a series of legendary weapons... Yes! ...that were made made by players that don't play anymore. And so those are what I consider legendary weapons. Right. No one will ever have a great sword made by Cheeky Joe again. That is true. I have a great sword from Cheeky Joe. That's a legendary weapon. You know, so that would be cool to be able to display those. Sam Burton you know, says it should be a recipe book for the recipes. Oh, that would be perfect. Where you get That's like an actual right. recipe yeah. book. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that would make total sense. That would be awesome. And then if you had, ooh, they should call it a display case. And you can put your weapons in it. It could even be a housing item that you can just add weapons to, and then they. Appear. That's what I'm thinking about a housing item. Yeah, yeah. So you can you can display them. You didn't get rid of them, and now they're out of your inventory as well. And so somebody <laughs> could hover over them. It would be even cooler if somebody could hover over them and read what they'd been named and who made them. Yeah, I agree. I said, so that was what. That's what I always, I always was laughed about the legendary system because it was like, uh, well, you guys. Is it really legendary if everything's legendary? It feels like it doesn't properly represent that word. So that's when it got into, well, it depends on who makes it. Who's making that that weapon? Who who made that armor? And so that's where I became, the, my concept of legendary came in, Was These all have the potential to be legendary, but only a few of them truly are. You know? Yeah. All right. So now let's get back to the ultimate 150 level of package. Sorry, Pipeline. Now, note that the two level of packages are going to be sent to the same character because they're right both there. are going to be sent to the first character you log into. That qualifies. But, of course, you could use your shared storage in order to get it to the other one so that you can send one into one of the other characters. You know, and now, this of course includes the level 150 I level up to 150 item. This also includes the level 150 gear that you get in the the one that's available in all three of them, and the two rare ledger item boxes that you get in the other one. But in addition to this, you will also get a million virtue XP. That was so nice. So you, wow! I've already okay. used them on M. Uh -huh. Her virtues will catch up Would you consider her virtuous now? She has always been virtuous, just not as high <laughs> in all of them as she would like to be. There's always room for improvement in her virtues. Yeah. Yes, yeah, especially when they keep raising the, <laughs> the <laughs> Moving that milestone. Yes. Now, also, you will get a treasured E. Corban portrait frame. In fact, I am using that on a couple of my characters now. But as I said, they're probably going to be tweaking them in the next couple of weeks. And you get the treasured title. Now the is it really the treasured? Because treasured... if it is, that's what M's title is going to be. 
Do you feel like people well, are no, screwed? Well, no, what they're doing... No, the treasured is going to be a prefix. The treasured. So, oh so it'll be treasured and Rolina instead of Emerlina the treasured. I can still live with that. Okay. No, those are already available, so you could... I know, I just didn't clearly look at it when I was messing around yeah. earlier today. Okay. Yeah. And we'll get a armor set that's just for the ultimate one. That's the armor of the treasured wellspring. So you see treasured seems to be their theme on all of this. And we also have the Oryx Steed of the treasured wellspring. It's cool looking. Um, Fibro yes. Jedi already has pictures up if you want to look at them. Okay. But they are cool. All right, I guess that makes sense. And we have a treasured jackal pet. And also a journey start milestone teleportation style. Oh, they actually, no, we already talked about that. Yeah, yeah, that that's actually coming. That's all. That was also in the see, what, what, the, yeah, for the yeah, ultimate one. That, yeah. That, 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 yeah, that was in the collectors also. You two bags? Yeah. <laughs> treasure, yeah, treasure. Then you get the treasured weapon aura and the treasured smoking bobble. And you're, you're I, actually smoke in any way, shape, or form. We don't know yet. Yeah, I, uh, I think it's. I think it's. I think it's. Oh, oh you mean it's the? It's a replacement for the smoking. Uh, well, wait, I no, think, smoking was just an emote, wasn't it? Right, right, yeah. Well, yeah, but right now, currently, the smoking is. With a pipe, I think this is going to be with a hoopka or something like that. <laughs> okay, we're, we're we're talking out in the desert. That's true. That you're right. You're right. That 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 actually. And in right. fact, I believe that the pages for the pre-order actually show someone smoking on a hoopka. Now, are oh, they on their are mouth when they're smoking the hookah? Or are they sitting on the ground doing this? Like a they're sitting on the ground. Okay. Yeah. So say a hookah war steed. That sounds kind of. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be true. I'm okay. So that's... that you guys know what those are and can name them because I would not have been able to. Well, <laughs> I'll be surprised if I was anywhere near the right pronunciation of that. <laughs> I watched a lot of movies. <laughs> no, I, 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 no, the first time I ran to that word was actually in an was in an RPG adventure where because that was someone's house had had one in it is one of the items that they said when they're describing the room that you were in. Oh, and we have the Wellspring Defender movement style, which I saw Cinders using that one earlier today. I was my one complaint is that my shield when I use that style cuts right into my body. Um, so I'm interested to see how it plays on a bigger character and if it does the same thing like on Krister, if you were to try it, if it does the same thing. Um, but the solution for me was just to switch to my greatsword. All right. Would you get a smaller shield, too? Would that help? Uh, I don't think that like a round shield as opposed to a square one? Well, no, because if you're holding a two-handed weapon, then you're not carrying a shield. I uh, know that. I'm saying... I don't I know. Well, I didn't maybe, why try not? it because why not? <laughs> my shield was already glowing a beautiful pink, and I didn't want to change and mess that up. So, yeah. Now I should note that Core did say that they have noticed a problem with that particular item in there. So I'm guessing that the trouble that M is describing is the trouble that they've been noticing in there. I can't remember exactly what he said, with, but I suspect that that shield clipping thing is what the is what they're planning on changing A to bunch it. of freshly injured guardians are overwhelming the emergency <laughs> rooms. <laughs> yes. but it is I really stuck my cool shield on my side. You hold Why is everybody down doing towards that? Your, down towards the ground uh, by the hilt and then you run towards wherever like you're going to lift it up and then slice them. Like... Yeah, and good. someone did point out that yes, if you're if you're a lore master, you'll be carrying a staff instead of a sword. But 
<laughs> Probably up and over your head rather than down towards yeah, the Yeah, that ground. doesn't sound as intimidating. <laughs> no, but Sans and I were both doing it, and it was really funny looking because we we're both like, nah, die. <laughs> and then I put my charge skill on and went really yeah. fast. It was awesome. Yeah. Exactly. That's what you want to do. Yeah, if you don't have a two-handed weapon, then it gives you a default sword in, in the place of uh, what we have. Okay. Now, we also get in here a... For the ultimate fan bundle, there are also some the expedition supplies. So you had one that was for the ultimate. There's also a one for the ultimate to supplement that. And this is also, of course, one per account for the expedition supplies. And that this one contains 25,000 virtue XP. Use them. 100%. What? Used them already. Yep, I'm sure you have. 100% XP boost, one hour, four times five. Virtue XP accelerator times four. So that plus the one that you got from the improved expedition supply will give you times five overall. And the ultimate carry all selection box includes all current carry alls as a choice. So all the various ones that you can have. So I was looking over that selection in there. Now, that, that does include the map carry-all. I, I didn't see, I didn't hit yet the map carry-all because there, you do, whichever version you order, you do also get a small map carry-all. Which was so, cool. Yeah, that's great. Which to your first character in there. And yeah, I had, I went through the character that received the, my, my mariner, had, had two maps on person, and there were eight in my shared storage. So combined together, they were the 10. So I just, okay, slurped them into my small map carry-all. So I don't have to worry about having those taking up inventory space anymore. Thank you very much. And you can get a larger map one. I think it's a medium. It's either a medium or a large that you can get as one of the options for the carry all selection box. A large, but one. you can also select. Yes, okay, it's a larger. So you get a large map carry all, and I think it's a large one from just about any type that's currently available. So, I, what what type did you select? Uh, I believe I selected another housing item carry all. Yeah, I can understand that because that's what I'm considering getting because I'm thinking, look at all the housing items that are currently in my shared storage. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's what's taking up, I think, about 40 slots or something like that. So it'd be nice in order to get rid of some of those. Yeah. And I discovered I have five of them. Five of them. Oh, boy. Wow. And wait, you need another one? Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> they're holding... Yeah. So what I did... So you know how you got the how, the harvest coffer thing? And then you got a gazillion things out of that? Every single one of my characters got a gazillion things. And so, like, three of my crafting bags are just multiples of those. Of the housing item bags. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Sam's favorite seems to be the Essence Tracery. Yes, I have three Runa. large ones of those and a small one. Yeah. <laughs> I, and at first I was wondering, why would anyone want this? But I, there is one of my characters that... Yes, uses that quite extensively. Yeah, so right now M has all my carry-alls, with the exception of, like, one. I think Cinders has a junk carry-all and a crafting carry-all. Uh, okay, and then, like, my cook has three carry-alls of their own. But M has, for all intents and purposes, all the rest of them. Because she is right. the one who I am using the most, running around picking stuff up, and I don't want it all in my inventory, so I have it going all into these bags. Wee. Yep. Good times. Right. 
I reorganized all my bags today while Sans was organizing hers. Yeah, okay. And you also get 10 extra shared bank storage, which was quite fortunate because on Landreval, yep. before opening up this stuff, I had zero shared vault space available. Same. Okay, so if they're doing this, is there also the possibility that they've increased your uh, storage size anyway so that you can buy more now? Or is it just this is, is this is the increase and that's it? I do not know. I did not check to see if I was able to buy more. Because that would be really cool. Okay. I'm going anyway, to guess I think that it's for those of us who bought everything you could, it's your boost to be able to store some of the new stuff that comes. Yeah. Yeah, I was just hoping if they opened that up that they maybe opened it up a little bit more, you know, and that it was well, something you could buy again that, next out. That unfortunately I do not know because I did notice that there were extra slots available for cosmetics but i think i was all but i think i had fallen behind the max already so i don't think that's sort of any type of indicator well when i buy it uh, in the next 15 20 minutes i'll have to tell you guys <laughs> okay yes now the extra shared storage space so when i logged into and did my video i had 10 spaces available because there were because those are 10 that came in from there but i also got gained eight extra because of the map carry all that i was talking about earlier so now i have 18 shared storage spaces available. that's awesome so we'll see how that and now if i if i do decide to go with that housing carry all then maybe i'll have a little bit more than that and i also have You'll also get a housing teleportation teleport item. This, of course, is a traditional thing with uh, the expansions of lately, where you get a teleportation item to some location that is important within the storyline. Just as we had one into Umbaba Harbell during the... That actually came in handy back before they had easy ways to get to the bloody eagle like d during the during the missions in there where it was very very difficult for a new character to get into there but if you had one of those items in there you were able to get into the heart of the city and not have to worry about getting killed on your way to the bloody eagle and the legacy of morgoth legendary item treasures so this is something to boost your ledger items. And I think M has already used up hers. I get the impression. <laughs> Sorry, I was distracted. Say that one more time. Okay. The legacy of Morgoth ledger item charge. Actually, what exactly is in that? Um, okay, so I believe that was two extra legendary item things that you could click open. The runes, the traceries, etc. For it. Okay. And I did not open those beyond just opening it to see what was in them, and then I put them all into my vault, because obviously okay. I don't need new legendary weapons on M. She has a great sword, a right. belt, and um, oh, what should we call it? Uh, yeah, but I figure if you have a character that's getting close to hitting one fifty or one forty one, then it might be useful for that particular character. For sure. So, yeah, with them at 150, um, I might save them and let Cinders use them. All right. And m we have Monster Play appearances who are going to be included in there, which I cannot say anything about that. And I have not treasured them currency. Either. Okay. And a treasured currency bonus. I'm not too sure exactly what this is, but my guess is that what is that maybe you get a bonus to earning whatever tr special bartering thing that they have for this particular expansion. So 
So uh, maybe it's a 10% bonus to what you earn or something like this. I don't know. I guess we'll find that out when we have the release. Yep. And that's it for what's in the Ultimate Fan Bundle. So that's, I think I covered everything that is in here. So any questions about any of this? Where do I send my money? <laughs> you will... You can follow the link that is provided in the show notes, and <laughs> that will lead you to the pre-purchase page. And in the pre-purchase page, you can say buy, upgrade. You have these buttons in here that you can hit in order to do your purchase. Yeah, with the map carry-all and the expansion of inventory spaces, I might have a shared storage that has enough inventory spots for you that it hasn't been that way in maybe, well, since the carry-offs were introduced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I know that whatever I clear will somehow mystically fill back up. Oh, uh, when yeah. I come away, so. Yeah, that, that's the problem about that means you empty need space. More empty space has a way of Empty space has a way of filling up very, very quickly. And still has almost 15 storage spots in her inventory, thanks to her carry-all. Go off. Um, depending on whether she's just... So when she doesn't have her things from Winda, she has 15. When she does have her things from Winda, she has 13. But that's what she's had, and she can maintain that uh, through her carry-alls. So... I am a huge fan of carryalls. <laughs> I can just imagine. Also, on top of this, Scenario had his final episode of his casual stroll through the various new landscape areas. This was a casual stroll through Urashtar, where he went through the new scape. And this is the one with, with the canyons in it. So he was going through the various canyon landscapes that you have in there very very rocky in this particular one so we do have a link to that particular one now next week there will be one more casual stroll that is related to the expansion and this will include a casual stroll through the instant spaces so for for the instances that are coming up through the i guess the three and six player instances i don't think that they'll be able to have a stroll through the raid. I don't think that would be far enough along in order to do that, but I, I could be wrong with that. But for, they will definitely have a preview of the other three instances, the the ones that are for smaller groups. And if you want to have a look at this, like someone's recommending Fibro Jedi's, yep. and I also did a video which and that video has a is showing off each of them where i am wearing them and having a look i go through them in order from first the standard then the then the collectors and then the ultimate one in there and that is it for the game news. So let's go into the store sales. Krister, since you have the healthier voice this week, maybe you could read store sales. Prepare for battle. <laughs> Prepare, for... <laughs> Prepare for battle. Get 25% off stat tomes and bundles, food and drink, combat buffs, and movement buffs. This is through October 10th. Uh, the weekly coupon is for gold. And that is uh, precious. So it's precious with two extra S's. And that is through October 10th as well. All right. Thank you, Krista. Uh, All right. Let's see. And it looks like that we are. It looks like we will have a link to Fibro Jedi's. Twitter post with the pictures of the horses and steeds. All oh. right. Let's have a quick look at that. Ooh. 
Okay, uh, thanks to a gift, which a great tool to have started. Opening the Lexi Morgan pods can't fish till dinner, but we are pretty new stee. So he's showing the stees in there. The Arx is beautiful, but he likes all the... Yeah, th this is one which has particularly nice looking stees in them. Yeah, I would love to see the War Steed set for the Treasured Steed and the Sand Striker Steed. Especially if there was a Shire Plum die for War Steed Cosmetics. Because the Sand Sifter Cosmetics died so beautifully pink. And I wish I could die a War Steed to match. <laughs> <laughs> oh can well. Can never be as cool as Krister if she can't match her war steeds to her cosmetics. She will never be as cool as Krister <laughs> if she dyes any of her war horses pink. <laughs> Not the horses, the cosmetic items on the horses. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, I thought you were talking about <laughs> dyeing no, the horses. No, I want to be able to dye the cosmetic armor on the horses pink to match my outfits, and I can't do it. And it's very sad. All uh, right. Yes, yeah, so I think the only way we'll ever get Cinders to play DDO is if they ever introduce pink unicorns. Uh, actually, so at one point I did have a DDO account and I started playing DDO and then I got confused and just quit. And now I can't get back into my account. <laughs> I'm more likely to, really difficult to play. I am more likely to play DDO than I think I am to play ESO because it's not as difficult to look at for me. Um... But I would much rather play Dungeons and Dragons as a tabletop game than well, there is that that way. So, all right, let's head to our week in gaming. Christer, what were you up to? Well, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but this week was as far away from gaming as it could have been. So I was getting ready for my vacation. Hold, hold on a second. I'm having a technical difficulty. There we go. All right. And getting ready for vacation meant working. The good news is that on Friday, I had everything wrapped up and had a nice, easy transition into my vacation. So I'm very happy about that. But basically, I didn't really do any gaming this week. Um, however, gaming is on the docket. So I'm going to have some days to game and game and game. And so I will definitely have some gaming to talk about next week. Cinders, what'd you get up to? Uh, so I played Solotra with Pileaf and Sans Winter today, and I also worked on getting the fourth crafting um, uh, skill up on the Cin or on M, and um, I added Weaponsmith, so she is now a prospector, a jeweler, a weaponsmith, and a metalsmith, so she should be able to make everything of her own armor that she needs, except her cloaks. Um, and so uh, she's currently stuck at Weston Neck because I need just a smidge more Erling Askarn. Um, and so I might end up doing that tomorrow while I'm sitting at home feeling crummy. So we'll see. Pineleaf, how was your week? We shall see. All right. I will begin with my minstrel who continued doing quests for the kindred of the coins. And at this rate, I think I will finished with this very soon because I am in the middle of the Belandor series. I love that Which one. is the uh, last of that. So the one that we lead us up so my minstrel, uh, so my minstrel will soon be ready in that regard. So I'm thinking that my minstrel is going to need a little bit of tweaking because she seems to be behind the rest of my characters. I guess I feel like a glass cannon. That's what I feel like right now. And a strong emphasis on the glass bit. And my lore master is questing in the Entwash Vale. So I got to the point where you reach the Fees of Fangorn and you are told to scat by an ent. And then my brawler was helping Seswinda to start on the story of the waves, the song of waves and wind. And we just finished the point where you meet up for the first time with Nakasi. Yes, and Sans goes, she is crazy. She knew they were an outlying fringe group to begin with, 
And now she just wants to make all of Gondor pay for their idiocy. I was like, yep. Yep, and that's the cussy. <laughs> I said, wait till I, you I meet think... the mom in Penneth Gallen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is. She, yeah, she, she's We're almost supposed... as bad as the cussy. Well, she's worse. Because nobody died, and she wants to burn down the civilization. Like, well, yeah. Like, she's worse. Yeah, it's like, so we have the one who's crazy, and we're supposed to hate him. And then we have the one that we're supposed to, like, like and support and take with us places. Like, really? They just make really poor choices. I don't like either of them very much. <laughs> Yes, Sam, that's oh, well. exactly it. Except my throat doesn't hurt anymore. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Uh, and that's it for my week in gaming. If you would like to send us an email, you could send it to podcast at loachaplayers.com. The Players Alliance has two shows on Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We record Locha Players News and we record DDO Players News when DRAC is available. You can choose for our shows at lochaplayers.com slash live. And that is all for tonight. And this is Panic Needles reminding you to skirmish responsibly. <laughs>